Good evening, everyone. To those of you who are here in the sanctuary and to those of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom, we're so glad to have you join us for our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And uh, we're in the 10-minute time frame just before the service where we like to give ourselves a gift of pause for just a moment. Yes, I can. <laughs> Welcome to Studio Church. <laughs> I can talk for as long as you want me to talk. <laughs> Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Just seeing if we have sound. Is this for both Facebook Live and Zoom, or? OK, so those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, we are having some technical issues with our sound on Zoom. And those of you here in the sanctuary, well. <laughs> And just so you know, there's no rule that we can only meditate for 10 minutes. So if anyone wants to get still <laughs> and start meditating, feel free. <clears throat> OK, so for those. I'm sorry? OK. <laughs> so we will be starting our meditation so we can somewhat stay on, t on time, on track here. Uh, and then they're going to be rebooting the computer at the back, so uh, hoping to bring Facebook, I mean, Zoom back online with us. So thank you for putting up with that. <laughs> Let's just all join together right now. So we take this time now to get still in our bodies, to close our eyes. Let's join together in taking a nice deep breath together, breathing in. And as we release that breath, let's just release any thoughts or concerns about what has gone on up until now. And with another deep breath, as we exhale, we release any thoughts about what is yet to come, giving ourselves the gift of being in the now moment using the breath as a tool to stay focused in the present moment. So without trying to control the breath, this is an opportunity to just practice observing. I invite you to just notice the in-breath. You might notice the sensation of the air as it's going in your chest expanding. And as you exhale, that sensation of the lungs deflating, the warm air coming out. And if it helps to keep the mind focused, you might just simply say to yourself silently, breathing in and breathing out. And when thoughts come up, which is absolutely normal, this is the time where we get to build that muscle of just observing without judgment. Just notice. 
notice where the mind went. Maybe label the thought, hearing, feeling, projecting, whatever. Maybe notice if there are any feelings associated with that thought. Just notice for a moment. And then again, without judgment and with great, great compassion, bring your attention back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
So gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings. This being aware of the body temple may help to just shrug your shoulders, wiggle your fingers and toes. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. So again, welcome to those of you who are here in person and to those of you out there in virtual land. Uh, glad we got Zoom back up and working. So sorry for those uh, problems for those of you who are with us on Zoom, but we're glad you're with us now. And so we begin our service as usual with our opening chant led by our wonderful Darius Lux. Thank you, Darius. So, indeed, God is in this place. Let's join together in prayer and know that at a deeper level. For truly, God is not only in this place, God is in every place because God is the one life, the one vibration of infinite love, infinite intelligence, infinite creativity, beauty, wholeness, every form of goodness that we can experience and imagine. This one is a vibration out of which all creation comes into being and that resides at the center of all that is. And so I know that each of us gathered here, in person or virtually this evening, exists as an expression of God, that we're filled and surrounded by the nature of God that we feel that vibration of spirit that allows us to feel our connection as a community. That is God's love that we are feeling. It is God's love that is inspiring each person who's of service this evening. I know it just flows through each one. I know it is God's love and inspiration and creativity that flows through our soul with Darius this evening as he leads us in our chants and he inspires us with his musical selection. And I open myself to being that channel through which the perfect message that all of us, myself included, have come to hear comes through, is spoken. I know it is all of God and it all supports us in awakening to that essence of God's nature in us so we can experience and express it more fully in our lives. And so I'm giving thanks right now in this moment for that presence of the divine and all the ways it reveals itself to us and through us tonight. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, 
Amen. So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, hello, everybody. It's nice to see some human beings. Um, uh, this song is an original song. It's called Choose Love. in the world today Too many things can blow your mind And if you're looking for a simple truth to see you on your way Remember Choose love Choose love Choose love And keep on shining a light Shining a light and choose love. Many choices in the world today. Too many things will blow your mind. And if you're looking for a simple song to sing along the way, together choose love. Thank you, Darius. And thank you for choosing love by saying yes to stepping in tonight, because I know you didn't get a whole lot of lead time on that, so thank you. <laughs> so, well, this evening I wanted to look at this idea of no comparison. And so if you haven't guessed, I'm probably going to be looking at how making comparisons can be problematic can lead to some negative experiences for us. But right up front, let me just say right here, right now, that we can't navigate through life. We can't make choices without making comparisons. We can't choose love, as Darius uh, just sang about, if we don't compare which is the pathway of greater love compared to something else. Every time we make a choice, no matter how insignificant it may seem to us anyway, 
We're making a comparison between how we'd feel if we chose one option over another. So this ability to make comparisons is what enables us to choose what seems like the best direction, the best option for us at any given time. I'd also venture to guess, however, that we've all experienced the sting of comparisons, right? Comparing ourselves to others in a way that makes us feel somehow devalued, diminished, or maybe we experience others comparing us to others that we aren't you know, showing up in the way that these people are showing up and we're being made to feel less than because of that. Or sometimes it's that we compare ourselves to others and we feel better than. We make a decision that we are somehow better. And though we may not realize it, the sting we're experiencing there is that we're not necessarily seeing the value of those individuals, and so we're not experiencing the good that they have to offer us. When we're comparing an experience that we're having now to one that we had in the past, or the way we expected it to be, and we're disappointed, we're experiencing the sting of not being able to see the goodness of the now moment. So, you know, basically gets down to the idea that our ability to make comparisons is valuable, it's necessary for us to navigate through life, as I said, but it can also be misused, it can be misapplied. It can be applied in ways that hurt us, that are detrimental. The key tenant, or one of the key tenants that you will hear as preach over and over again in Science of Mind, is that our thoughts, our beliefs, our perceptions play an integral role in how we experience life. So it's not so much about the fact that we're making a comparison that's problematic. It's what we're thinking as we're making that comparison. What are we perceiving? What are we telling ourselves? And it's important for us to notice that because as we make the comparison, if we're saying this is so much better than that and we're closing our heart down to this over that or ourselves versus someone else, we're shutting ourselves down to the goodness of God that's right there for us to experience in every, any given moment. So, when I was nine years old, I actually celebrated my 10th birthday there, um, my parents were going through a difficult time and um, you know, it led to them separating. But I was considered the most sensitive child uh, amongst my siblings. And so my parents thought it would be a good idea for me to be able to go to France and be showered with the love of my grandparents and spend a few months there which I was, I, you know, my grandparents were just absolutely spoiled us rotten. So here I am in, in France. Uh, one day I was walking to school with my grandmother. And at that age, I had developed this fascination for track and field. I remember any track and field thing I could watch on TV or go, you know, watch in person, the idea of people, you know, especially racing, you know, running and that exhilaration of, of the speed and being able to run really, really fast, that was something that just, you know, I could feel it in my bones. I never trained, I never practiced, I was never on a track team myself, I was never, you know, very athletic. Um, but I loved every now and then to just have the opportunity to just take off and run and have that feeling of just going as fast as I can, imagining I was moving at the speed of light, right? And so one day as we were walking um, to, to school, as I was saying, we came across a square that was fairly empty, and I just had this urge to just show my grandmother how 
fast I could run. And I said, Connie, look. And I just took off. And I was running really, really fast. And she's just cheering me on like a typical loving grandmother. And you know, as I ran back, she goes, oh, bravo, bravo. You know, and I was getting all this encouragement. And so, you know, I thought I would take it that much further. I'd impress my grandmother. I was, you know, like a rock star in her eyes at this moment. So I just told her, I said, oh, Connie, I think I'm the fastest boy at my age in this town, well, in this country, in, in the world. Not even close, OK? <laughs> now. We really put our grandparents and loved ones in awkward situations at times. Like, how's she going to respond to that? Because, you know, she could have said, yes, of course you are. But I noticed that my grandmother, this time, paused, thought about it for a moment as to how she would respond. And as some of you have heard from prior stories I've shared, one of my grandmother's favorite terms, terms of endearment for me was mon petit lapin bleu, my little blue rabbit. So she reflected for a moment, and then she told her little blue rabbit that, you know, no matter how well we do anything, eventually someone will probably come along and do it better or they'll be faster, or stronger, or smarter, or more creative. And she just looked at me and said, you know, the most important thing is to do our best and to feel good about what we're doing and not compare it to anyone else. And she said, Did you know what? Even when we don't do our best, we need to just know that we can do better and do our best to do better. What an incredibly loving, sweet, encouraging way for a grandmother to tell her grandchild, you know, sweetie, get a grip. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest kid in the world. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what her little blue rabbit wanted to hear in the moment. I mean, whatever happened to, yes, of course you are. But it really stuck with me. It stuck with me for years. And on some very deep level, I remember just getting the message that my value didn't come from being better or faster than anyone else, that she loved to see me doing my best, didn't need me to be the fastest, and it even came through that if I was bad at it, or even when I messed up, that I would still be loved and encouraged to do better, because there was that potential in me, no matter what, to do better. And the overall message that came through is you don't need to compare yourself to anyone else to know that you have value, to know that you're loved. See, the problem we run into when we make comparisons, or that we can run into when we make comparisons, is that it can lead us to equating our value or others' value based on how well we or they compare to one another, how we perform humanly our human successes and failures. We can feel diminished by others who are more skilled in certain areas, or feel like our value comes from certain skills that we happen to have. And those mindsets get really, really limiting. They lead us to feeling like uh, we need to be more like others, Ever felt anything like that in your life? Like you were supposed to be more like that person over there or those people over there um, can lead to envy. Or, you know, when we are telling ourselves that others should be more like us, it can lead to contempt. Now, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who had a very deep, uh, profound effect on our founder, uh, Ernest Holmes, told us that there is no great and no small, 
to the soul that maketh all. You know, in God, there is no greater or lesser. He also reminded us that imitation is suicide. Feeling like we have to imitate others, we deny the authentic, unique expression of the divine that God seeks to be through us. And you know, this is really, this is a human challenge that I think many, many of us face and have to move through over and over again. Um, I look out at nature, and you know, that really sets an example for me, is I, I don't think the rose in that garden is sitting there going like, ah, oh, look at that bougainvillea. You know, all that bright color just outshining me. Or, you know, some tiny little blade of grass looking up at, you know, a redwood and saying like, why can't I be tall and strong like this? Everything is what it is and has a purpose and has value in its own way. And, you know, what we emphasize in this teaching is the more we perceive or sense God's nature in ourselves, in others, all around us, the more we experience it. So when we're telling ourselves that we're lesser in some way, or when or others are lesser, we are not experiencing that highest vibration of God's love, that God's love, that God seeks to express and experience through us. Yeah, I remember this same grandmother who had such a profound effect on many. One time, you know, when she was talking to me about my dad, and as I've shared with you, my dad was very, very successful in his field in political science, um, got to circulate with many what we would consider high mucky mucks. Um, and I remember my grandmother one day saying just how much she admired him and how proud she was of him, and just saying, well, at least I contributed something to the world, because she didn't feel she had done anything all that significant. And I remember her actually being surprised when I look back at her and just said, do you realize what a profound effect you had on my dad and why he just adores you so much, why we all do? Do you know how many people's lives you have touched? I think about people like her, my mom, and what a profound effect they had on me and my sense of spirituality and you know, just the vibration of love that they transmitted to so many. You won't find their names on Google. They didn't you know, achieve any level of fame. And yet they had so much value. If we were to take that scale of comparison that we so often use to say, you know, who had the bigger impact? Who was more successful? They might not measure up. Don't we all know some people like that who have really touched us deeply? And yet, you know, who would even know about them except us, those who have actually had human experiences with them. And, you know, it's not that we, not that we don't look outwardly and compare ourselves to others or, you know, use others as role models and learn from them. You know, there's absolutely no harm in, you know, if I you know, suddenly held this urge to start singing and performing, I could well use a role model of someone who does it very well and ask, well, what's, what's the pathway? What should I do other than get a grip? Um, you know, what, what can I do to support myself in this? We, we can look at others as example, but examples, but it's important for us to realize that whatever we see in others that we admire, that there's some vibration of God that is being expressed to that person in that way, and that same vibration exists in us. They're just an inspiration. They're there to awaken us to that spark in us that seeks to be expressed in some greater, some more expansive way in its own way through us. And, you know, when we look at others and see their weaknesses, you know, do comparisons, 
and see how they're not living up to their potential. I think we really should um, look at the ways, look at it in a way of saying that, okay, they may not be as skilled or evolved in certain ways, but that they too have a divine potential. Otherwise, we're failing to see God's presence in ourselves and others. We're judging by outer experiences and preventing ourselves from experiencing that presence that lies in all of us, fully and equally, no matter how it appears on this outer plane. And so I would invite us as we go forward this week, as we catch ourselves comparing ourselves to others in a way that makes us feel diminished, makes us feel less than, to remind ourselves that you know, I'm, I'm seeing an aspect of God's nature in that person or in those individuals that lives in me. See, we wouldn't even recognize it. We wouldn't resonate with it if it didn't exist in us as well. So we want to first remind ourselves of that truth and maybe ask ourselves, well, in what ways might I express that quality in some expanded degree? If I'm feeling a sense of I'm looking at them and I'm feeling, oh, I wish I could be more, it's something in me that's seeking to come out and be more fully expressed. It's some aspect of God's nature that's ready to be birthed in some expanded way. And so we can just sit with that question and just see, well, what would be our authentic way of allowing spirit to do that through us? And then when comparing others or situations you know, in a way that we feel dissatisfied with them, let's remind ourselves that there's goodness in this person, in those individuals, in this situation that's there to be discovered and realized. May I, may I know this more deeply so I can be that place in consciousness to know that truth and to see the greater good and to experience it. In that way, I believe we apply our capacity to compare in ways that contribute to our growth, contribute to our expansion of you know, expressing that nature of God in us, and at the same time, to see the greater good in others and life in general, which allows us to experience more of that good. So let's take this moment to turn our attention inward. And so I invite you to call to mind anyone that you feel in any way diminished by when you compare yourself to them. Anyone that gives you just a little sense of less than. And ask yourself, what quality of God do you admire in them? Beauty, strength, compassion, sense of non-judgment, their leadership, whatever. And recognize that your ability to relate to this quality, your desire to express it more, is because it lies within you. And so I invite you to inwardly bless this individual or these individuals for reminding you of this aspect of your nature. And then open your heart and mind to acknowledging it within yourself and to have it more fully expressed through you in your own way. Now I'd invite you to also look at anyone that you compare yourself to and that you somehow feel above or better than, that your heart closes down to them and acknowledge this is a human tendency. We all have a tendency to fall into that, but remind yourself 
in the field of God's love, God's unconditional love, they are as loved and valued as any of us. And there are ways that they express God's nature that we're just maybe not aware of. And so I invite you to set your intention to use this capacity to compare things humanly that are constructive, allowing yourself to step into your greater potential and honoring that potential in others. Know that as you, doing, you do this, you are choosing the pathway of love. And so let's remain in this place in consciousness as we join together in absolutely knowing that presence of the one life of God that is the life that animates all creation and that its nature is fully and equally present throughout the universe in each and every being, every situation. And so let us join in consciousness in knowing the truth for those who are struggling with change on the human level that the nature of God is changeless, birthless, deathless, and that every human change just represents an opportunity to know and experience in God in some new way. Let us absolutely know for those experiencing challenges with physical or mental health that that vibration of God's wholeness and well-being lies at the center of us all, ready to be revealed, revealing the pathways of healing of stepping into that greater experience of well-being, that that same presence is a giving and absolute creative nature that is always finding ways to give of itself through us. And for those who are not feeling and knowing that value that they have, that they are being led to those perfect right places to give of their gifts, to feel valued, to make an impact, let us remember that this presence of the divine is infinite. It knows nothing of lack and limitation. So where anyone is experiencing any form of lack, we know the truth of that abundance of God that allows us to just open up and give of ourselves more expansively and just take in and rejoice in the good that is always there coming to us, being sourced and supplied and let us absolutely remember that the core nature of this one is love. And as we open to that vibration of love, we expand in our ability to see ourselves in a more loving way and to extend that love toward others. And knowing that that vibration of love is always for greater good, let's honor its impulse as we set our intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us absolutely know that God is at the center of each and every one of these situations. And as we know that good is being revealed and together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all pathways to God, knowing that all pathways lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.
I see the light, I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. Spirit, yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Darius. So, this is the time in our service for. Affirmative giving for those of you who are here in the sanctuary. Uh, we will have boxes at the back of the sanctuary as you're exiting where you can drop off your donations. Um, for those who are with us online, just a reminder that you can uh, make your gift either by calling into the church after service. We'll be here for about 15 minutes to take your donations over the phone by credit or debit card. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page. You can make a one-time or set up recurring contributions, or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And as always, whatever ways that you are continuing to support us, we just can't say thank you enough. So with that, holding our intentions, feeling those in our hearts, putting our hands to our hearts, and holding our gifts if we're here in the sanctuary, let us say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you again, Darius. Ah, well, as we bring our service to a close, just uh, want to first of all say thank you to, um, let's start with those of us, those of you out there in virtual land. Thank you to practitioners Christine Crawford and Gail Pallott for holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, to our Zoom support team, Alma Alvarez, Brenda Jordan, and Ray Regan, thank you for your support, and once again to Melissa Allen for being our support on Facebook Live. Thank you, we couldn't be continuing to do this without all of you, so very, very grateful. Here in the sanctuary, once again, Adam, thank you so much. <laughs> 
to our wonderful Doreen and Blair, working out our technical issues, staying on it, making sure we could move ahead. Thank you so much. To Nikki, who is on second camera here, and Darius, thank you so much once again. It was perfect <laughs> for tonight. And to all of you who are here in person and those of you joining us virtually. Um, so, uh, oh, and Darius, your music is, it's DariusLux.com to, to get your music. It's everywhere. You know, just go to CVS and you'll... <laughs> but just look up his name and there are any number of ways uh, you can bring more of that inspiration into your home. Uh, again, a quick reminder of the ways uh, that we can make donations for those of you who are out there in virtual land. Uh, we'll be at the church, so the number is 818-762-7566, and uh, we can take your donation by credit or debit card, nhcrs.org forward slash give to do it online, and texting the word give to 818-457-3419. Prayer with a Practitioner is available on Zoom after the service. Uh, we're not yet doing that in person, but those of you who are here, if you'd like to be supported in prayer with a practitioner, you can just uh, leave us your number, name and number, and best time to call, and we'll have a practitioner reach out to you and pray with you, uh, do our one-minute miracle over the phone. Um, and those of you who are on Zoom, or if you're on Facebook Live, just go to Zoom, and we'll put you in a private breakout room with a practitioner for prayer. You can also email any prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call our church office and option four allows you to leave a voicemail uh, with your prayer request. And we check the voicemails and emails regularly every night uh, and send those requests out to all the practitioners. Um, let's see, I'm gonna talk first about the in-person attendance. So we've been getting some questions. We know things have opened up and uh, people are asking about, you know, wearing masks or not wearing masks. We know that people's comfort levels are different, and we just want everyone to feel as safe as possible. So we're asking in the sanctuary to wear masks. And as far as when we get out, uh, you know, afterwards socializing, just ask a person if you don't know already whether or not they feel comfortable hugging, and uh, just so everyone can feel that their level of safety is being um, honored. And uh, let's see. So next Wednesday evening, my final hours <laughs> as the official assistant. <laughs> I'm reassuring you, once again, you will see me again the following week at Tese. You will see me every Sunday uh, on pulpit with Dr. Mark. I just, you know, it's, I'm retiring, but it's gonna be an active with North Hollywood Church retirement. Um, but I thought the topic, beginnings and endings, might be appropriate, so that will be what I'll be speaking about. <laughs> Hope you can join us either in person or once again, Facebook Live and Zoom. And exciting that our Abundance Workshop with Dr. Mark, Abundance 2021, will be on Zoom. It starts, uh, it'll be for four Tuesdays starting uh, July 6th. So that's a Tuesday after the 4th of July weekend from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Cost is responsible giving. And the book that Dr. Mark is using this year is John Randolph Price's uh, The Abundance Book, kind of appropriate, right? And really, Dr. Mark is a much sought after teacher around the topic of abundance. If you want to expand your abundance consciousness, I can't recommend this highly enough. Uh, with that, just a reminder that our Zoom virtual patio, we keep that going before and after our services. So you can, those of you who are on Zoom can continue to visit with congregants that way. Men's group is still meeting on Zoom uh, Sunday from 11 to 11.30. And our morning meditation that I just, I see some of our fellow meditators uh, that we meet up every morning, 8 to 8.30 a.m. Monday through uh, Saturday, pardon me, 8 to 8.15 a.m. Monday through Saturday. So if you haven't joined that, it really is a lovely experience. 
And where do you get all the information about everything? NHCRS.org, yes. <laughs> so thank you, thank you again for being with us this evening. Let's turn inward one more time. So once again, how grateful I am for all the ways that that beautiful essence of the divine has made itself known to us and through us during our time together. I just know that on many levels, our souls have been touched, our consciousness has expanded, healing has occurred, and I know that we take that into our lives and that it continues to ripple out into the world and continues to bless us and others. And so I'm giving thanks for all the blessings we've received this evening, knowing they are all of God. I just say thank you, God, and I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so those of us who are here, why don't we rise as we close out in song? <laughs> We read.